This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. We are in, uh, in uh, finishing up our Gospel of John, and today we're looking at this passage that deals with uh, the three questions that, uh, it was the same question uh, that Jesus asked Peter, uh, do you love me? And uh, so in John chapter 21, starting with verse 15, when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know I that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Now, you remember the story from earlier, especially when uh, we just studied it not too long ago, uh, that Peter had boasted that he would never abandon Jesus. Remember that just uh, uh, the night before Jesus, well, the night that Jesus was arrested, Jesus is speaking to the disciples, and uh, they're wondering, you know, he's telling them that he's going away, and they can't go with him, and Thomas says, well, where are you going, and uh, you can't follow me, and, and, uh, and uh, you will eventually go away, all of you will go away. And, and Peter stands up and he says, whoa, 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 time out, I'll never leave you. I'll never abandon you. These other guys, they might abandon you, but I'm not going to abandon you. I'll never, I'll never run out on you, God, or Jesus. And uh, uh, the story is in Matthew chapter 26. And uh, Peter says, though they all fall away because of you, I'll never fall away. And Jesus said, truly I tell you this night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Tonight, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter had to be thinking to himself, oh, I'll show him. Peter's boasting of his commitment and loyalty get challenged that very night. That's true in our own lives, isn't it? So many times in our own life, somebody will, you know, will say, oh, I'm, I'm going to really be faithful. I'm going to, I'm committing to the Lord. I'm going to, I'm going to follow God. I'm, I'm making my choice to stand with Christ. And then Sometimes it seems like that very day the challenge comes, and we feel like we've let God down. Jesus takes the disciples out to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, and, uh, and I want you to, to take a look at what happens. I want you to see the real Simon, uh, Simon Peter. Peter slept when he should have been praying. I mean, they fell asleep. The disciples, of course, it had been a long day. I mean, I mean, let's give the guy a little break. It's been a long day. But Jesus was praying. Of course, Jesus knew what was coming. They didn't. They all fall asleep. So, and Jesus said, you know, can't you just watch with me for an hour? Can't you just pray with me for an hour? They couldn't. They fell asleep. Like a, you know, it's kind of like a Baptist prayer meeting. Uh, you know, they just couldn't stay awake and they fell asleep. Peter fell asleep when he should have been praying. And sure enough, when Jesus gets arrested that night, Peter pulls out a knife and starts fighting when he should have been submitting to the Lord. And then Matthew, one of the disciples, said in the Gospel of Matthew, we read it, Matthew 26, verse 56, then all the disciples left him and fled, all of them. Peter fled when he should have been following. Peter, this guy that said, I'll never abandon you, God. I'll always stay by your side. I, you, you, know, you can count on me. I'll be there for you. He slept when he should have been praying. He fought when he should have been submitting. And he fled when he should have been following. Now, here's how that lack of commitment shows up in our lives today. If you're not praying, you're sleeping spiritually. If you're not praying, if you don't have a valid prayer life, you're sleeping spiritually. If you're not submitting to the Lordship of Christ, you're rebelling. If you are not following Christ, you are running from Him. You see, there's a lot of people that say, oh, I'm not a follower, but, and so, but they think that that's okay because they're just kind of hanging in there. Nope. 
you're either following or you're running from God. You're either following Christ or you're running from Him. There's no just standing still there. Which is it? Where are you in your commitment to Christ? And then Peter, in an act of loyalty, I think, or maybe guilt, I don't know, but he goes with John to find Jesus when Jesus gets arrested, and they find that Jesus is going through this mockery of a trial. But notice how Peter's lack of commitment overshadows his loyalty. In Matthew chapter 26, starting with verse 69, Now, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, Hey, you also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it uh, before all of them, saying, I don't know what you mean. And he went out to the entrance. Another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied it with an oath. I don't know the man. And after a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, certainly you too are one of them. Your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I don't know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. So three times, just as Jesus had said, you're going to deny me three times, three times Peter denies Christ. With the first denial, which is verses 69 and 70, uh, Peter denies knowing Jesus. In the second denial, verses 71 and 72, Peter denies being a follower of Jesus. And then in the third denial, which is verses 73 and 74 there, Peter identifies with the world. He just starts acting like he's part of the world. He starts cursing, and, you know, what what he's saying is, look, guys, you know, I don't know the guy. If I'm lying, I'm dying. You know, if, 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 if I'm lying, may a lightning bolt strike me right now. That's basically what he's talking about. He just started acting worldly, started identifying with the world. Now, let's take a quick look at those denials. In the first denial, Peter rejects that he knows Jesus. In other words, he denied Jesus, his rightful place in his life. In that first denial, what he was just simply doing was he was just simply let he was he was denying Jesus the rightful place in his life. He wasn't letting him be Lord of his life. He's just saying, "Look, I I don't even know what you're talking about." He wasn't taking a stand. He wasn't actually just saying, "Oh no, I don't know Jesus." He was just saying, "Hey, I don't know what you're talking about." He wasn't letting Jesus be Lord of his life. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open